Would you stand? Would you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration. It was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went from their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expected, expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she, came, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard these words were amazed. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I think most of us love a good plot twist, whether it's a movie or a book we're reading, when a story takes an unexpected turn. It's exciting and riveting. Now, I don't just want to fill my sermon with spoilers, but there are some pretty well-known plot twists in movies that we're all pretty familiar with. While Star Wars Episode Seven just came out, the original Star Wars trilogy has one of the best plot twists in cinema history. When Luke Skywalker finds out that Darth Vader is his father, what a shock. The villain that he's been fighting against turns out to be his dad. And you can probably think of some of your own favorite stories in movies or books where an unexpected turn happens. We like the surprise of it, or even when suspense is raised in a story, when there's a little bit more, uh, catch, it catches your breath a little bit more. Even Bible stories raise the suspense. David and Goliath, or Daniel and the lion's den, how are these stories going to be resolved? We like that suspense. So it's kind of interesting when we read the story of Jesus' birth in the Gospel of Luke. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be a lot of suspense. And maybe it's because we're pretty familiar with the story. We've heard it many, many times. We see the nativities throughout the season with Mary and Joseph calmly doting on their baby. The shepherds come to worship. We know how it all goes. But I think if we read the story again, we can find that there is a major twist in the story. We learn at the beginning of the passage 
that Mary and Joseph were going to be registered for a massive census. Now, biblical scholars say that the dates get a little squishy here. It's hard to line up when exactly this would have taken place because the timelines of the rulers don't quite match up. But what they really emphasize, what scholars really emphasize, is that the author, Luke, is trying to make a point to us as the readers. And that is that Roman rule was very oppressive for the Jews, even or especially for the little guys. What a massive burden to have to travel to your hometown to be counted. This was more than just a really big pain. So here's Mary and Joseph who've traveled all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. They were weary from travel, especially Mary. She's due to deliver a child at any moment. And though our vehicles of travel today make life quite a bit easier, I'd imagine that many of us can empathize with being exhausted after traveling a long distance, especially now with the holidays when many of us are traveling to visit family and friends. And while they were traveling, Mary went into labor and delivered her child. Some scholars say that it wasn't necessarily a lack of money that landed Mary and Joseph outside a traditional inn, but rather it was just overcrowded because of the traveling masses. Something akin to today if a flight were canceled, hotels were booked, and you had to spend the night in an airport. But other scholars suggest that yes, Mary and Joseph did lack resources to secure lodging, leaving them vulnerable and seeking shelter wherever they could for the delivery. So the baby had a very unconventional cradle, a manger. And then we also hear about some shepherds. Now shepherds did not have a good reputation in this society. At best, They were doing menial work for little pay. At worst, they were seen as lazy, dishonest, and would graze their sheep on other people's lands. So they were not looked on very highly. Even the fact that they were still in their fields when everyone else was off to be registered demonstrates their lack of status. They were seen as not even being worth counted by the rulers maybe similar to a migrant worker or a person who's homeless and sleeping in a car today. They were completely overlooked by those in power. But it's to these very shepherds that the angels appear and the glory of the Lord shines. And the shepherds, probably rightfully so, were terrified. But the angel brings reassurance not to fear. There is good news. The Messiah is here, and this Messiah, the great Savior that would release the Jews from oppression, the one who had been hoped for and prayed for, the one who had been proclaimed in prophecies, who was given many names, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, King of Kings, the Almighty, who is heralded by terrifying angels, who has all the glory we've ever heard of, this great Messiah comes as a baby. What? This is not what we were expecting. Here is the twist in the story. The Messiah comes not as a powerful statesman, but as a vulnerable baby. He comes not to the seat of power in Rome, but to the backwater town of Bethlehem. He lies not in a gold bed with purple cloth, but rather a manger with rough cloth. He is announced not to rulers and kings, but to some scoundrel shepherds in their fields. Jesus is born on the road far from power to unwed parents with no elaborate preparations made. This is how Christ, the Son of God, enters the world. This is the greatest twist in any story. And after the shepherds traveled to see the Christ child, they shared all they had been told. Mary ponders all this wondrous news in her heart, and the shepherds glorify and praise God for the good news. The good news that God is with us and not how we would have expected it. 
God breaks into our world. And because of the unexpected way that Christ arrived, we see that God identifies with the poor, oppressed, homeless, burdened, homeless, burdened, and powerless. The Messiah is born this day, and this day offers newness and possibility and freedom from fear, whether it's fear of emperor or the other or fear of death. There is freedom from all fear. Christ brings peace, and not merely an absence of strife, but fulfillment. This is the peace on earth that the angels declared. Christ has come, and God is with us in ways we never expected. And today still, God is with us in ways we do not expect. While some of us might prefer or want to see a marvelous spectacle, like what the shepherds saw with the angels. God often works in more subtle ways. God is the still, quiet strength that sustains us in the face of difficulty, that keeps us going. Whether it's illness or loss of job or other strife, God is the strength that keeps us going. God also shows up with groups that we might not first expect. Like the angels appear to the unlikely shepherds, God continues to show up with those who are marginalized in our society today. And if we step out of our comfort zones, we can be part of God's work with people who are stigmatized in our world. Like people who are homeless or refugees who are fleeing violence from their countries. The Christ child was first announced those who were disenfranchised in their society. And part of our call today is to reach out to those whose society overlooks. Jesus' life, and we see starting even with his birth, was full of twists and unexpectedness. So as those who follow Christ today, we are called to do that which society does not expect. To serve others, but not for recognition, but to share Christ's love to give, but not for acclaim, but just to further the kingdom of God, to love someone who's not easy to love because that's what Jesus would do. The Son of God came as a vulnerable baby to parents without power, quite unexpected. And it's our call to continue to surprise the world with how we share the love of God. I know I will continue to enjoy plot twists and unexpected turns in stories and movies. But I don't think any other plot twist can compare to the story of how our Savior arrives on Earth. This little bitty baby, born in a barn, in a backwater town, middle of nowhere, is the one that brings peace to Earth. God is with us in unexpected ways. So let us continue to surprise the world as we share Christ's love. Let it be so now and always. Amen. <laughs>